I'm already pretty baffled by the concept of NFTs, this whole idea of owning through a receipt that kind of says you own the thing it's pointing to, digital assets that are easily replicated, the whole idea of creating artificial scarcity where it doesn't need to be, and turning art into investment opportunities, and in the video game landscape, turning games into investment opportunities rather than a fun form of escape, asking people to risk financially. And in that landscape, the one thing that especially gets me and baffles me is the idea of NFT real estate. Peter Molyneux uh, released the game where it's kind of dedicated to buying and selling NFT land and also creating NFTs, uh, you know, via user created content and essentially making a whole video game business. Fake real estate, NFT real estate has become more and more of a thing. And in a recent report, people who invested in NFT real estate ended up losing millions. Well, what a surprise. So this is an article from New Salad Tech Spot. The headline reads, NFT fans lose millions in video game real estate. Why on earth would you want to own digital real estate? Like in the physical realm, when you buy property, at least it's like you can use it for important things, be it to live in a home or to you know start a business and you know make it your office space whatever it might be but in the digital realm what do you do with owning real estate that doesn't exist that isn't even real what what do you do with a digital house except like i guess if you have a, an avatar have the avatar inhabited but that offers no real value whatsoever because the whole point of real estate is like the whole comfort of having an environment that you can decorate for your purposes and for yourself and that you can actually walk around in and use. Uh, you know, there's actual practical usage for real life, real estate and property in the digital realm. Uh, it, it, there's just no point. I, I don't understand people who uh, partake in this kind of stuff except to, well, participate in what is essentially a Ponzi scheme where the rich can take advantage to get people to buy something at an exorbitantly high price uh, before it loses its value and those people are left uh, biting the dust, which is what seems to have happened to these NFT fans. This is related to, surprise, surprise, the whole uh, Bored Ape Yacht Club NFT landscape. Here's how the article details this situation. Board Ape Yacht Club creator Yuga Labs recently made its other deed collection available for purchase. And this other deed collection is part of a project called Other Side, which is actually a video game, an NFT MMORPG. Board Ape Yacht Club having gone so popular, they're trying to expand by creating their own metaverse essentially to make it so their NFTs thrive further and they can make more money that way. It's a way to provide users with the ability to obtain land in its upcoming crypto-based MMORPG. If you're into buying fake houses in a digital realm, play Final Fantasy XIV. There's a whole housing market there, except none of it involves any sort of real money transaction. The housing market of that game is strictly confined to the in-game economy of Final Fantasy XIV fake money that's strictly used in game and so it's actually a form of escapism and the real estate market there is its own fake thing that's part of that fantasy realm and there's no financial risk whatsoever it's just a time investment that everyone has to go through it's an even playing field but with crypto based MMORPGs and their NFT based real estate you are putting down real money and there is a risk of losing quite a bit of money I mean sure there is the bet and gamble that you might make a ton of money by selling fake real estate that people are stupid enough to buy. But uh, again, it's a Ponzi scheme and only a very fortunate few will come out on top. Everyone else below the top of the pyramid will come out with losses. In this specific case, unfortunately, many fans instead walked away with nothing but disappointment, high transaction fees, and stolen funds. Now, initially, this other side endeavor proved successful with high volumes of NFT trading. Yuga Labs sold other deed NFTs via OpenSea. The collection sold or at least tried to sell tokens to claim real estate and resources in Yuga's upcoming metaverse game Other Side. The NFT drop netted approximately $310 million in just a few short hours. That also had this side effect of the 
sale generating far more traffic than expected on the Ethereum blockchain, resulting in Ethereum gas fees of up to $14,000 for some users and failed transactions for others. What are gas fees? Well, there are charges passed on to users to compensate for the computing energy of processing Ethereum transactions. It's a service fee of sorts, a tax that has to do with how much energy your Ethereum transaction used. Based on that, you have to just give a little extra to pay for that used energy. Kind of like how, you know, if you ask someone for a ride and they ask you to pay gas fees for doing you that solid. So the higher than expected traffic led to some users being fined gas fees up to $14,000. And then for others, they experienced failed transactions and purchases, but were still charged for the energy costs, even though they got nothing out of their Ethereum transaction. It's the equivalent of, you know, asking someone for a ride and them charging you for gas fees, even though they never showed up and stood you up. And gas fees across the board became so sky high that we got in a situation where users paid $165 million in gas fees during the sale due to other sites poorly developed smart contract code. Now this is where we delve into the nitty gritty of the Ethereum technology. Smart contracts are a feature of Ethereum's ERC20 token. They initiate action between two entities when all predefined criteria are met and the transaction has been validated across the Ethereum network. In this case, the poorly developed smart contracts and their ill-defined execution criteria resulted in massive of congestion and high transaction fees across the Ethereum network. And that congestion contributed to failed transactions that people were charged gas fees for, even though they didn't go through. On top of flaws with the technology itself causing people to lose money, there is also scammers who got in to get a piece of the pie. Some NFT collectors were drawn in and taken advantage of by phishing attacks via fraudulent sites offering gas refunds and additional NFT minting opportunities. Many scammers required users to register and connect their wallets for a full gas refund and access an other side lands raffle list leaving their assets vulnerable to unintended access. So they exploited the high gas fees that this whole situation caused to fool people into thinking that they were going to get their gas fees reimbursed, but instead they ended up being traps that led them to lose just that much more. And this attack by scammers resulted in millions of dollars in NFTs being stolen and sent to scammers' wallets. It is specifically highlighted that one wallet address managed to earn more than $5 million from unsuspecting users. And guess what? With the NFT and blockchain landscape still kind of being a wild west with very little in the way of regulation, there's no recourse for this kind of stuff. People who are afflicted by these scams usually end up having to just eat those losses because, yeah, there's nothing in place to allow them to seek restitution or anything of the sort. They got screwed over in this landscape where crime, theft, and whatnot is rampant and is kind of being, in large part, allowed. Now, Yuga Labs did respond via this tweet from May 4th, where they said that we have refunded gas fees to everyone who made a transaction that failed due to network conditions caused by the Mint. The fees have been sent back to wallets used for the initial transaction. Here's how to find your refund. So basically, those who asked for a ride and got stood up and were automatically charged for gas fees, even though they never got the ride that they asked for, were given that money back for the gas fees that shouldn't have been charged. But for those who got those high gas fees with successful transactions, well, they just had to pay that fee. As for those who were scammed by, well, scammers, users who fell victim to the phishing scam are out of luck. As TechSpot points out, this isn't the first time that Board Ape Yacht Club got targeted. In fact, they have successfully been targeted in the past. Here's a situation from not that long ago, back in April 25th, 2022. This is a report from The Verge that reads, Thief steals $1 million of Bored Ape Yacht Club NFTs with Instagram hack. Actually, that number was closer to $3 million, and they essentially used a phishing post on Instagram after they hacked into the Bored Ape Yacht Club 
Instagram account. And if hackers aren't hacking into Instagram accounts or going into NFT Discord channels and attacking there, looking to steal cryptocurrency, looking to fish people into other traps. And I've already pointed out before a number of examples where people have had their apes stolen from this post that talks about how Board Ape Holder S27 lost their bubblegum ape and matching mutants. Jesus, that's a combination of words and a half. And then you got this infamous tweet, I've been hacked, all my apes gone, this just sold, please help me. This is a tweet that wasn't met with a whole lot of sympathy with people essentially going, what did you expect would happen when you participated in this shady landscape rife with scams, theft, crimes. And beyond thefts against individuals, hackers have hacked major companies as well. Back in January of 2022, Crypto.com lost $30 million to a hack. Here we have Beanstalk, who lost $180 million to a get rich quick scheme. Those numbers get far worse when you look at this DeFi hack that resulted in $322 million getting stolen. Next up, we got Bitcoin's $460 million disaster. And this is a report from back in 2014. So this is definitely not new territory we are in. Next up, we got a $600 million theft on the part of hackers executed against Poly Network and then here we have a video game related blockchain theft that is currently the second highest in terms of how much money was stolen by hackers. A hacker stole $625 million from the blockchain behind NFT game Axie Infinity. This is the shady crime ridden, theft ridden, con and scheme ridden environment that so many companies want to normalize despite knowing that it is currently a wild west dangerous landscape. It's what game companies are promoting as the future of gaming and trying to normalize this right here and now with no concerns about the general lack of security and the overall adverse effects that NFTs are having not just to the environment but to people partaking in the same manner that companies are trying to sell loot boxes as something good, as something fun, something ethical when studies have shown that they have the same psychological effects as gambling, but companies don't want to acknowledge these negative factors and inform customers because that's not profitable. Keeping customers informed and being honest to customers about the negative effects of profitable and lucrative schemes is just not profitable. But recent signs seem to suggest that the NFT fad is passing and that engagement is seen among a niche group. The masses certainly don't seem to be as enthusiastic about NFTs as they once were when the conversation was raging on. NFT sales are flatlining and data seems to show that interest surrounding NFTs is very quickly diminishing and people are getting wiser about this stuff, understanding that this stuff really isn't safe or offer any advantages really that current technology doesn't offer. NFT cons continue to outweigh the pros and that's why there is a continued high level of backlash against any companies that announce NFT endeavors, especially after the whole microtransactions and loot boxes normalization. I think people are wiser about allowing companies to normalize things that clearly seem shady and hopefully that pushback continues until NFTs are just too risky of a proposition for companies to be able to normalize them. Turns out these non-fungible tokens are pretty fungible if people know what they're doing, if attackers and hackers know what they're doing. I mean, hackers are making these heists and thefts look easy. And when you consider how lapsed game companies have been about security in terms of our personal information and whatnot, are we really going to trust that game companies are not going to suffer similar hacks and that people who invest in video game related NFTs won't potentially one day see their wallets emptied out and their collections emptied out with no recourse. Hell, this whole situation with Board Yacht Club already gives us a glimpse of what could happen in the gaming landscape as this endeavor here, Other Deed, is video game related. It's a crypto-based MMORPG. It is a massively multiplayer online video game where many fans walked away with nothing but disappointment, high transaction fees, and stolen funds. And you can bet your ass that if it can happen to Board Ape Yacht clubs game it can certainly happen to ea games and ubisoft games and their quartz crap and all of these other greedy companies are trying to get a piece of this pie while the gold rush is still rushing well, at the very least that's one man's take on everything in the current nft landscape and game companies uh, pathetic attempts 
to normalize this stuff. And hopefully the pushback is enough that the normalization will never happen. But that's just me. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the latest NFT heist and thefts. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.